Welcome back everybody and thanks for being here and being part of the community. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it and go down to the description and check out my website. Lots to do there, lots to see, become part of it. Okay, today we're going to go ahead and remove the engine. Now mine don't have a rear apron on it, which is fine. We'll go over that briefly with the apron on. It's not a big deal, but it makes it easier for me to film and somebody did suggest that I do an engine removal video up close and in detail. So I got my GoPro ready. We can get it back inside of there and up underneath so that we can get the best film possible. Let's go. First thing is first, disconnect your battery. I don't have one, so yeah, I have a crappy one. But anyhow, disconnect your battery. What we're going to do first is slide the jack under, jack the car up, get it on stands, and then I'll show you what we're going to do underneath first to get that disconnected. Don't start loosening the four bolts that hold the motor in yet. Don't do that. Okay, I'm going to show you from a view underneath of where we're going to put the jack first, so let's do that now. Okay, so you see that little point underneath, right where the jack's going to come up? That is towards the front of the car behind the transmission mount at the rear of the tunnel. So let's jack it up there. I'll speed the film up here. Now, we're going to take a jack stand. We're going to place it underneath your torsion tube, okay? So, let's get this up. That's about the safest place for it. Turned it wrong. Everything fights with me when it's time to film, of course. Okay. See where it's at? Right under the torsion tube, the torsion arm. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay. Right underneath the torsion tube. Alrighty. Now we'll go ahead and let the jack down. Okay, so we are under the driver's side of the vehicle, on the side of the transaxle, there's your heater box, okay? And you can see where the fuel line comes up. You can see where the fuel line comes up to the back of the engine, okay? When I back the camera up, it'll make sense. You wanna disconnect your fuel line from there, okay? I'll show you what I mean in a second, okay? We're going in from the driver's side of the vehicle, okay? And be patient. Some people don't know where this stuff's at. There's your valve cover. There's your heater box. And there's your fuel line, okay? So you know where it's at. Disconnect that next. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to loosen first the heater cables, the controls for the heater boxes. That should be an 8 millimeter nut bolt it is I'm on the passenger side let me hold the cable so I don't break it I'm replacing them anyhow but let me get under here I don't know if my hands in the way or not for you but hold on to the cable while you loosen the bolt okay I'm gonna replace it with all new cables but not all you are doing that. You're just working on your car. Hopefully this comes out easy. Nope, it won't. It's been in there for 50 years. Here we go. And see that broke anyhow. Okay, no big deal. All right, so I'm seeing if that was loose. Yeah, might be able to refurb these heater boxes. Okay, I gotta get this hose off. Can you see that? Let me adjust. Okay. We got to get the duct hoses off the heater boxes. So these little pins here, 
seem to be pressed tight. So I'm going to loosen them up and we'll push them forward to get them off. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. You see if I can loosen the tabs up on it a little bit. There we go. And the other one. Okay. Let me see if I can get this off of here. It's been on there forever and ever. I think it's shot actually. Oh, see what's going on there? Pulled that off of the heater box. So we'll go ahead and move to the other side. I'm gonna end up removing these all completely and getting all the crap out of them. So let's go to the other side. Okay, so we're on the other side. Eight millimeter bolt again. Let's get that off of there. That one broke loose right away. This uh, is what hooks to your lever inside the car. And that's how you control the heater boxes from opening and closing. So you wanna disconnect these so you can pull the engine and not break them. Like I said, when you're opening and closing, that's what opens and closes the heat going into the ductwork up here. We got to get this piece of ductwork disconnected. So let's see if this will be nice to us. So far, not very good. Loosen that little tab. These have been on here so long. Everything's gonna fight, obviously, but it's okay. Here it comes. All right, hope I'm not in your way. There, I'll take you up in there. Okay, see that? Okay, as you can see, the ductwork is off of the heater box now. And we'll pull them completely off once the motor's out of the way. Here is the bottom, you have four bolts on your motors. You could see here, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is the bottom passenger side. So we're gonna loosen that first. It's a 17 millimeter wrench. There's really not an easy way of getting a ratchet on from where I'm at, so it's fine. Now remember, you're loosening the bottom of the engine, not the top. You don't wanna loosen the top first and then get underneath and loosen the bottom and then have the motor come down on you. That wouldn't be very delightful. Okay, let me speed the film up here. Okay. Let's move on to the driver's side of it. Let me move the camera. Here is the driver's side lower engine nut. Also 17 millimeter. Wow, he's been on it forever. But PB blasting and wire brushing them up sure helped. Got the two lower nuts off the heater box cables to control them and the duct work. And we disconnected the fuel line underneath there. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And now it's time to move up top is what we're going to do next. So as you know, I said about your fuel line, it comes out of the tunnel, okay? And goes up to the back of the motor. Mine is disconnected right behind the heater box. I'd stip my hose because it's old and dry rotted. But you will be disconnecting a fuel hose back there. Okay, what you're going to do next is do the wiring next, okay? Now, if you're not familiar with VW engines, make sure you mark your wiring 
so you know where they go when you go to put them back, okay? One is your oil pressure that goes to the light in your speedometer. And like I said, wire them if you want, I'm just used to where they go, okay? And the next one will be the positive side of your coil, okay? That comes from your ignition switch and that also turns on, I'll show you in a minute here. Let me bring you over here a minute. That goes to the other side of your carburetor and plugs into the cutoff switch and your choke thermostat, okay? So that all hooks to the positive side of the coil. Okay, so you get that out of the way. And the other one is going to be your backup lights. Let me get it off the coil and I'll show you. There it is there. And it's clamped on, comes across here, over there. So we're gonna unclip the inline fuse from there because we don't want it coming off and ripping it when we pull the engine. Okay, so there's your wiring there. And we're gonna have to get to the generator in a second. This right here is the negative side of the coil and that's your distributor, but it's gonna be pulling with it. So I was just letting you know what it was for, okay? Okay, we're at the generator. You have D positive and DF, okay? And then you would have a ground. The brown one is your ground. So, forgot to have my screwdriver already, sorry. Take that off. And so you don't lose certain things. We're going to drop the washer. Dang it, I'll find it later. I'm gonna put the screw back in there, because if not, you end up with screws and bolts everywhere. If I can get it started now. There we go. So put the screw back in there. It can't hurt. The brown was the ground wire, okay? Eight millimeter. Loosen these up. Okay. The green, DF on a generator. Okay, and D positive would be your red. Okay, let's take this nut off. So, generator's disconnected. That's the rest of the wiring. Wiring's all disconnected. Let's pull this through. It goes behind the coil. And that's it. Okay, wiring is out of the way. All we got left now is the throttle cable. Let's get that. And I'll show you something real quick on a different style. I have the generator, but here's an alternator. Okay. If you have this style of alternator, there's just a three-prong plug that you'll be pulling off of there. So it isn't a big deal. And if you have a one-wire alternator, there's just one wire going to it and then a ground wire. Okay? That's the only difference. It ain't a big deal. Okay, now we're on to the throttle cable, which goes through the carburetor here. This one has a straight screw on it. Most of them have a little eight millimeter bolt holding the uh, throttle in through the throttle barrel, through the, for the cable. Ah. Okay, we're gonna disconnect this. Okay, and let's pull the throttle cable out of the way. Okay, now we're gonna reach behind the engine and we're going to pull the throttle cable back through. So you're gonna reach down behind here. Okay. Let me pull this up and out. There we go. There. You probably can't see that, but the throttle cable's right there. I pull the tube out of the doghouse and pull the throttle cable through the back so it's out of the way. Two more little things. We have two 17 millimeter nuts at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get to them and what to do, and I'm gonna get the camera back in there. All right. Okay, so we are on the passenger side between the engine and transaxle back in the firewall, and that is a 
17 millimeter nut. And I just dropped the wrench. This goes through the starter and it's a half moon shaped bolt. So if it gives you problems, you may need somebody underneath to actually hold the other end of it with a pair of vice grips. So far we're okay. And my neighbor's dog is barking, of course. Okay, let me reach in there. I may block your view for a second. Always pull the stud towards you while you're turning that nut so you don't push the bolt back where it won't hold. Okay, so you can see it down there. That was very hard to film that part. I apologize. I did the best I could do. So that nut is off of there. Let's move over to the driver's side. We are on the driver's side. Okay, that is just a stud coming through there with a nut. 17 millimeter. I'm trying to get on it. I can't get what I normally do because I have the camera in the way. <laughs> so that made it a little difficult. There we go. Let's break it loose. Come on. So let's go over a couple things here real fast. If in fact my apron were on, now I can't help this guys, it is what it is here. If my apron was on, I'd have a rear tin going around the back here. I'll show you what I mean. that would be going around the back here. So you would remove your hoses, you know, from the muffler barrels, lift that tin up and out of here. There's a couple screws that hold it on here, here on the side. You remove your heat riser, uh, little brackets right here, and you would pull that rear tin off of here, okay? Then actually you would have the car up in the air like you do now, and you'd be pulling the motor towards the back of the car a little wee bit, and then dropping it down to clear the rear apron. When I put a new apron on this, I'm going to make a removable apron because it's just easier to do, especially I'm probably going to have dual carburetors. So next, disconnect your spark plug wires. I already did and got mine out of the way because you don't want them hitting the sides here and breaking when you're lowering them down. So get your spark plug wires out of the way, double check everything, your reverse wires out of the way, the other wire, there ain't much there from your wiring harness is out of the way. Everything is clear. So let's go ahead and pull this out. So let's get the jack ready. If my jacks can go this high on the motor, it's usually good to put a board underneath it. So put yourself a little piece of two by six under there. I'm gonna see if I can reach. Not sure. Okay, let me try to slide it back. Grab it by the housing. See what we got going on here. Oh, and it's coming out. Let's see here, where's my light? Trying to see what they got going on. Almost that. See where my jack's sitting. Don't get underneath it now. Watch your toes. Should have had a piece of wood in there. wire through there a minute so it's out of the way 
I'll show you what I'm talking about when I'm done here so you don't have to wonder what I just did. Okay. Look like I'm hung up on something. Nothing ever goes smooth when I'm filming. I find that odd. Anyhow, your reverse wire here, it pulls through back here, okay? So don't get hung up on you, I'll show you up close. Here's the wiring that goes to the transmission. It's the reverse switch. And what it does goes through here, okay? There's a little hole here I'll put my finger through, see? It comes through there, so no big deal. I actually pulled it with the O-ring is what I did. And that's what the back of the motor looks like. Sorry, I got some light reflecting in here. That's the older style pressure plate and throttle bearing. I'm gonna see about going over to the new style. I don't like the old style very much. It's just me. Don't pay attention, I do weird things. But that's pretty much it. Uh, no beetle is gonna be different from the other with the process that we did for except maybe the wiring going to the alternator, so. I got this at Walmart or Harbor Freight and I forget which one because they sell the same things. I think it was like $10. Of course, now lumber's up 300%, might be a little more, but it has the little dolly wheels on it, okay? And you can set your motor on that at your own discretion, of course. I've never had an issue. And it's nice to slide the motor around the floor. You'll see what I mean here. I have that motor sitting in here. I have motors everywhere. And as you can see, it's sitting on one, the same one. And I've moved this motor all over the place in the garage and I've never had an issue at all. So just a little extra tip from Uncle Slade. Okay, so that's a detailed view of engine removal. I do apologize, getting between the fan shroud and the back firewall to get to them nuts, it's not really hard, but it's hard to film. So I did the best that I could do, guys. I really try. Uh, smash the like button. Thanks for being here. Leave a comment and come back. We got a lot more to do. This whole car needs done. See you soon.